What's up everybody? Quick video about uh, workhorse chassis. Uh, 2002 Damon Daybreak. Uh, guy was complaining about stalling on the interstate, dying, limping, uh, then key off, engine off uh, for, you know, 20, 30 minutes and then it'd fire back up and it would run, you know, 20, 30 miles and then it would start kind of acting up again, but as long as he wasn't requiring a lot of injector duty cycle, you know, it was okay. It's got the 8.1 cube V8 in it. Um, and again, it's an O2 chassis. Fuel tank, uh, for any of you that have ever attempted this, it is uh, not small by any means. Um, my light's taken away from the depth perception, but it's uh, the size of a... Uh, <laughs> of a power wheels uh car i would say but even if the fuel was out of it it would still be god awful heavy i do not uh, i mean it's basically doesn't have probably 10 gallons of fuel in it maybe less but even if it had no fuel that tank is still super super heavy so i use two jacks if you ain't got two jacks you might as well forget about it i would not try to center a jack underneath of it because as soon as it fuel even if it's got just a little fuel in it if it shifts to one side or the other, you're uh, you're going to be in a heap of trouble. Uh, wasn't that hard? Drop it, get the fuel pump module out of it. But uh, as you all know, that most of anybody that's tried to find or source parts for these for the do-it-yourself kind of guys, uh, shops hate working on these unless you take it to Camping World or something. Somebody that specializes knows the part numbers of everything on the chassis inside and out. Which, you know, where's a Camping World? at any given city that's not going to happen uh oe remy uh, com, he's got extensive extensive information on this stuff uh, but anyway uh, not sure who moderates that but i've given y'all much props because if it wasn't for y'all's website i would not have found this uh part number for this pump because there's several part numbers for this pump um and of course in 2004 this design changed and instead of the fuel pressure regulator being on the fuel rail up on the engine uh they started putting it right here and uh anyway i have already ordered a fuel pump module supposed to be in tomorrow uh the only thing different with the new one is it's got an oval type plug uh, but the outputs and the vents uh and the return is the same uh but anyway it uh Fuel pressure was holding steady at idle, you know, when it was cold, somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 55, 56 PSI. But he said that the longer you drove it, the worse uh, that he thought it got. And he was just going by, you know, acceleration and the feel. They pull a little geo tracker behind this thing. Uh, but so I decided I would drive it because I had it running for 35 minutes here in the shop trying to get it to do something. It wouldn't do anything. So after about i don't know a couple days of dicking with it i checked the obvious uh grounds uh fuel pump relay uh, i even took it apart checked contacts inside it, it looked fine um, power delivery at least as far back here to the tank as i could get without getting directly it's fuel pump module i've already done the uh, ignition uh switch uh, upgrade replace ignition switch and put a relay on the uh the high draw circuits because the ignition switches were notorious for melting down on these workhorse and p30 chassis uh, but anyway so i didn't really do a video on the diag uh, of this thing but uh, fuel pumps should be in tomorrow like i said and i'll get it thrown in there and then maybe i'll do a follow-up video on fuel pressures after that but it should be you know somewhere around 60 uh you know at startup or, or at least 62 uh key on engine off uh you know on the prime so i'll see how it goes and hopefully maybe do a follow-up video if i think about it because a lot of times i forget i get stuff in and out of here all the time do update videos but um i normally like to try to do videos on the rvs because there's just not a lot of information on them uh, but anyway so we'll keep in touch